Hello and welcome to Brocade Basic Switch Setup. In this short video, we're going to take a look at just how easy it is to set up a Brocade Switch. Although Brocade Switches have many advanced features and functionality, Basic Switch Setup is actually pretty simple. First, you connect a PC or workstation to the Switch's serial console port. Then you change the IP settings and default passwords on the Switch. Next, you connect the Switch's Ethernet management interface to your network. And finally, you configure zoning. To connect to the serial console port, locate the console port on the switch. Now connect a workstation to the switch using the included RJ45 serial console cable. Connect the cable to the RJ45 console port on the switch and an available COM port on the workstation. The cable included with the switch is RJ45 to RJ45, but also includes an adapter to go from RJ45 to DB9 serial. If your workstation doesn't have an RJ45 or DB9 serial console connection, other cable types are readily available online, such as RJ45 to USB. You'll also need a terminal emulator software such as PuTTY or TerraTerm installed on the workstation. You're now ready to set up the switch. From your workstation, launch your terminal emulation software. In this example, I'll be using PuTTY. The connection type you'll be using in the emulation software is Serial. In this example, I have the configuration settings saved. I'm going to go ahead and load that saved configuration and then show you the settings. The console cable is connected to COM port 3 on the workstation, and I've set the serial configuration settings to a speed of 9600 baud, 8 data bits, 1 stop bit, no parity, and no flow control. These are the correct settings that you want to use. After you've confirmed that the settings are correct, go ahead and open the connection. You're now ready to log into the switch. Use the default admin account with the default password of password. After you log in, the end user license agreement is displayed on the screen. Review the license agreement, and when you're ready, select Y or Yes to accept it. Next, you'll be prompted to change the default password for the default admin account. After that, you'll be prompted to change the default password for the user account. Once you're logged in, you're ready to set the IP address for the switch. The command to configure the IP settings is IP ADDR set. If you intend to use DHCP for your IP settings, enter on, otherwise just hit enter. Now enter the IP address you'll be using for the switch's ethernet management port. For this example, I'm going to change the default IP address of 10.77.77.77 to 10.77.77.60. After you've entered the IP address, hit enter. The default mask configured on the switch is 255.255.255.0. If this is OK, go ahead and hit enter. Otherwise, enter the new subnet mask. Now enter the gateway IP address and hit enter when you're done. In my example, I don't actually set one, but typically you would. You can verify the IP settings by using the IP ADDR show command. You're not ready to connect your switch to your company's ethernet network. Start by locating the ethernet management port on the switch. Now use an Ethernet patch cable to connect the switch's management port to your local area network. You're now ready to manage the switch using Brocade Web Tools. Web Tools is a browser-based graphical user interface used to manage the switch. At this point, your Brocade switch is up and operational and ready to pass traffic. Connecting servers to the switch will allow the servers to see any storage ports attached to the switch. This is fine if only one server is attached, but when multiple servers are attached to the switch, you want to restrict which storage ports each server can access. Brocade zoning is the feature used to restrict access. And with a single switch storage network, zoning is really the only feature that needs to be configured. Before we take a look at how to configure zoning, let's review what zoning is and how it works. Simply put, zoning enables the partitioning of devices attached to a fabric or fiber channel network into logical groups called zones. By default, zoning is disabled. When zoning is disabled, all devices in the fabric can access each other. When zoning is enabled, devices within a zone can only access other devices within that zone. In addition, 
Devices not defined in any zone cannot communicate with any other device at all. In other words, when zoning is disabled, all devices can see each other. But once a single zone is created, any device that is not defined in a zone can see no other devices, and other devices cannot see it. Let's take a look at a couple examples. At the top you can see Zone 1, the blue zone. There are two devices in this zone, a web server and a storage called Store 2. These two devices can see each other, and no other devices can see them. To the left of the blue zone is a storage array called RAID 1. RAID 1 is not a member of any zone, therefore no other device can see it, and it can see no other device. To the right of Zone 1, the blue zone, is Zone 2, the green zone. The green zone contains three devices, a server called FileServe, and two storage ports called Store 3 and Store 4. The server in the green zone is able to access both Store 3 and Store 4. Below the green zone is Zone 3, the yellow zone. And the yellow zone contains two devices, a server called Database and that same Store 4 that's also a member of the green zone. A device can be a member of one or more zones. And in this case, both the Data Store server and the File server in green zone can access that same Store 4 storage port. Now that we understand the basics of zoning, let's go ahead and take a look at how to configure zoning on the switch using web tools. Start by opening a web browser. From the web browser, enter the IP address of the switch, in this case 10.77.77.60. Now log into the switch. We'll do so using the admin account. This takes us to the dashboard of web tools. From the web tools dashboard, select zoning. Now select zones, and then the plus button to create a new zone. Now give the zone a name. And then select add. You can define zones by port or by worldwide name. In this example, we'll be defining the zones by port. We're going to select port 0, as well as port 2. Then hit the blue arrow to add them to the selected members window. And then select OK. Now select Save. At the dialog window, select OK. Now that the zone is created, you need to add it to a zone configuration. So go to Zone Configurations, and then select the plus button. Give the zone configuration a name, then select Add to add the zone you just created to this zone config. Select the zone, and then select OK. Now that you've created the zone config and added the zone to the zone config, you're ready to save the zone config. To do this, you select Save, but before you do so, there's a checkbox called Effective. Select the Effective checkbox, and then select Save. At the dialog window, select OK to confirm. And as you can see, you've now created a zone config and edit your zone to that zone config. Brocade switches have both a defined and effective zone config. The defined config is all of the zones that are currently defined, and the effective config is the config that's currently active on the switch. When we selected the effective checkbox before saving, we were telling the switch that we want the config to not only be defined, but also effective and active. You're now ready to install your transceivers and attach your devices. Thank you for attending this training and we hope you found it helpful.